PLM, why it's your number one priority. Studies show that around 60 to 80% of new products fail. I know, hey, that is a pretty broad estimate, but then again, who is gonna talk openly about their innovation failures? The question has to be asked, why do so many new product fa innovations fail? Of course, defining failure is a very subjective matter. If you're moving at speed, getting through more failures in a short period of time means you'll reach success quicker than your competition. But equally, you couldn't have caught that failure before a whole lot of manufacturing, marketing and sales expenses. And as a result, it's about getting to the failure as quick as you possibly can before you waste too much time on it. Why do so many ideas, innovation projects and new projects and products fail? Knowing the reasons for this is extremely valuable. After all, if you know the causes of innovation failure, you can set the right measures and methods in innovation management in order to considerably increase the chance of success. A new product can fail in so many ways, but the bottom line in the end is it doesn't initially find the customer and over time add sufficient value to their lives. It's the journey prior to this that's so crucial to ensure the right product is going into the market. As a result, it is clear whether an idea succeeds or fails depends largely on the company you work for. Around the world, the C-suites are feeling the pressure to innovate and create business models that can keep up with disruptive technology and advanced customer experience thinking. However, what is more telling is that less than 10% of CEOs are satisfied with their organization's innovation capabilities. Today, it is about innovation and it's the primary factor in driving growth. The CFOs, the CIOs and the CTOs have budgets and I have to say right now, if I had to spend money on anything, it would be on applications that enable and deliver innovation above that of any other enterprise application. According to a recent study, almost 100% of companies are already running ERP applications and it's therefore not surprising given that it was the first application to establish itself as an essential business tool. However, without PLM, the ERP system will not establish a forward-looking and collaborative innovative platform, nor will it manage and consume accurate data from design, engineering, manufacturing and maintenance, especially when you start to include industry forward technologies such as IoT and big data it can ultimately lead to minimal or no improvements to the business, innovation and products. It was the other day in Stockholm with one of the leading vendors of their head of delivery and we were chatting away. We were saying to each other, why is it when large enterprises know they have to innovate, that they more easily pull the trigger on an enterprise management system like ERP for millions than they do for a product innovation platform or PLM system that they could save their company from disaster over the coming years ahead. Perhaps it's because the CFO and the CIO align themselves more with ERP, while the head of manufacturing and engineering aligns with PLM. We concluded today's priority is in the installation of product innovation platforms, product lifecycle and manufacturing operation application layers because to survive in the fourth industrial revolution, nothing is more important than delivering better, smarter, more personalized and faster delivered products. So what is it that's holding companies back from fully launching their end-to-end -end PLM strategies? Surely everyone, regardless of their role, shares the same goal, the same success of the business. Or maybe they don't. The people who recognize the initial value from PLM are relatively senior technology or manufacturing personnel. They understand the importance of improving seamless material traceability that makes the investment in seamless end-to-end -end data technology and collaborative processes that much simpler. Meanwhile, the C-suite has been conditioned to focus primarily on wider operations, measure quality assurance, sales, accounts payable and purchasing, never mind overall business strategy, budget and capex. As a result, while they are interested in change, especially technological, they are compelled to look at everything from an ROI perspective. In other words, to turn skeptics into fans, you must first focus on the ROI. 
So talking their language. PLM has to and does connect to generating revenue, developing customer loyalty and reducing processing costs throughout the supply chain. The customer expectation and experience economy means a very different customer who now looks beyond just price and buying convenience. Consumers now demand a more immersive experience and one that allows them to self-learn across multiple touch points prior to physical engagement. Personalization and maybe one day even batches of one mean if manufacturers don't follow changes along the supply chain, they will miss correct labeling, design and delivery. This can lead to regulatory issues and potentially even consumer danger. Storing of all of these increasing product variables in an end-to-end -end PLM system makes it easy to reflect on these ongoing changes. In addition, producing that all-important ROI, PLM can bring increasing revenue through faster design and manufacturing combined with earlier product innovation, introduction that can lead to revenue increases. PLM allows the company to not waste time and effort while the product is going through its life cycle. This can be further extended to product cost reduction, the reuse of parts, and of course, the removal of costly mistakes. But really, is that what we're looking for in order to survive and thrive in the 4AR? A return on investment of PLM versus other applications? Or well, today, is it about innovation success where we first started this article? A product and innovation survey of manufacturers conducted by IDC found that for over half, the big vision for product lifecycle management is to be best in class in product innovation. One of the ways I'm seeing is through product innovation platforms, a unified global product design system that's designed to bring in all cross-functional and ecosystem innovation, be that mechanical, electrical, structural, and software, together with data and real-time global collaboration. Now talk the language of the C-suite, we need to start talking R-O-I-I. -I. Yes, return on innovation investment, and that's an entirely new world. It's an amazing new world and always exhilarating to be part of it. New product innovation, design collaboration enablement through platforms, efficient and product productive life cycles and smart manufacturing is where the enterprise attention is going.